Hey, y'all. Hey, welcome to the Purpose University podcast, your source of inspiration as you seek to overcome adversity, create your best life and be your most authentic self. I am Dr. Eve. I'm your host, and I'm excited that you decided to join me on today because your time is valuable and I recognize you could be anywhere else, but you're here. So thank you. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm really happy to have you here, and I certainly hope that you come back for more. So, uh, real talk. If you're feeling what you're hearing, help the show grow. Leave a review and tell everyone you know. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. So, I am here today with Atlanta native, Ole Miss graduate, Florida Tech educated, Tyrone King Jr., a.k.a. the original TK. He is a photographer and a web developer. And check this out. One of his goals in life is to get paid for pitching creative concepts. So an all-around creative who's worked with Samsung, Walmart, Sweet Baby Ray's Barbecue, and even the Army National Guard. I want to welcome you to the show, Tyrone. Thank you for coming on today. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, gosh, I'm so excited to have you and delighted. So thank you for taking the time out of your extremely busy schedule because you are an <laughs> entrepreneur. Um, definitely to you connect know. with me on today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, about that life. Yes, but no, I'm so excited to be I'm so happy to connect with you. Like, you know our story is kind of like mixing each other a little bit. So I'm happy to really finally be able to interact with you. That is really cool. And that we met through Alexis, who is, you know, dope. Bessie Marie out here. Shout out to you, Bessie Marie, for the connection. It's been, like, I think maybe a year or so that we've actually been kind of kicking it on social media, like, connecting. So, wow, how time flies. But, uh, again, just thank you for coming on the show again. And I want you to take a minute to tell everybody what I didn't say. So, you know, who are you and what is your story? Well, I am Tyrone King Jr. One thing he did miss up, I'm not the original TK. My granddad was the original TK. Um, I'm just the TK that, you know, came after and was able to fight to the death with my cousin for the name. <laughs> <laughs> I came out on top. Um, but no, so I go by TK to um, people who are very close to me. Um, funny story about that in high school, I went by TK by so many people that people, when I was running for vice president, people actually thought one and wanted to vote for me, but they did not know who Tyrone King was <gasps> on the ballot. No. So, so I lost that year and they was like, TK, I wanted to vote for you, but I didn't see your name. I don't know who Tyrone King is. And I was like, are you not saying? I was like, y'all playing, right? <laughs> it's hilarious. But basically, I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, East Point, right over there by Greenbrier, baby. I moved to Mississippi when I was 12, and I attended Olive Branch Middle School and Center Hill Middle and High School. From there, I went on to the great University of Mississippi, where I obtained my Bachelor of Business at NIM with an emphasis in marketing and a minor in computer science. And currently, I'm in pursuit of my master's degree at, right now, Florida Tech, but I'm looking to transfer, so. Well, just leave them then. Absolutely. That's, <laughs> that's kind of how it has to be. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> but hey, you're getting it, so that's yeah. what matters the most. Um, I'm interested in knowing from you, because, I mean, you went to old, like, the University of Mississippi, like Ole Miss. You know, yeah. we, we know that is the flagship, or one of the flagships of the state. What made you want to go there? What made you even want to go to college? Ooh, so as far as like making me want to go to college, honestly, I don't even know where it popped up. It's just kind of like somewhere along the way, if I got older, it was kind of like, this was the next step. This is what you're supposed to do. And I was like, okay, because I know the purpose of this is being first generation. For like, I don't think even until I got to college did I realize like, oh, I am a first generation college student. Just because it just felt like, you know, what was next for me in life in terms of like what I wanted to do. The choice for Ole Miss, I actually started attending Ole Miss the summer after my sophomore year of high school. I began taking courses there through a summer program called Summer College for High School Students. So basically during the summer, I would go down there for like a month and we got to live in the dorms and feel like we were part of the school because we were really taking classes with, you know, college age kids. So it was just a really great thing. I got to make some really good friends and make connections and stuff. And so when the time came, it just felt right. That's really cool. So what I understand about you is that you started to teach yourself HTML coding and other digital skills when you were 12. Like, what piqued your interest in technology like that? I don't really know. I just, I always, like, I was a kid who always liked to be on the computer. And I think that as I grew, when things kind of changed in my life, I began to not necessarily be as outgoing as I was. 
and so um, being online and just seeing cool stuff was just it was just funner to me than being outside. I was never really the sports type of guy, so that just kind of interested me. And then I, MySpace, I was having a conversation with actually earlier than one of the calls I was shooting. We talked about MySpace, and MySpace is where I learned that. Like I was that person who would hide their songs from you. I went and see like I was just. I think that I kept seeing it as I was changing stuff on my page to make it look cool. Eventually, I looked at the code, and I remember the first thing that it was, like, those falling letters that were, like, so gaudy. Oh, my God. Like, I would never put that on a website now. But those songs <laughs> that I used to have back in the day, I looked at it, and I was like, wait. You know what I mean? Like, I was kind of reading the code, and I was like, wait. If I change this, it's going to say what I'm telling it to say. Mm. And I was like, huh. And so then I kind of paid attention to what was going on around it. And from there, I discovered that this whole thing was HTML as a language. And so I just kind of dove into that. Like, I found, like, a tutorial, which, looking back, it was a very terrible, like, website-building tutorial for what we have today. But it taught me those bases of, like, this is what, you know, HTML tags are. This is how you put images. And I still remember, like, running to my sister being like, oh, my God, come look at this. And I had made, like, a pink page that just said her name on the page in blue letters and I was like oh my god this is so cool and she was like oh what okay <laughs> but I thought it was the coolest thing and from there I just kind of kept teaching myself and growing it and learning and developing more and so I was able to expand into like more languages when I went to college by taking like computer science courses that you know took me down different programming languages routes and stuff like that that's really cool like actually really cool because it was being on social media <laughs> that even started uh-huh. this thing for you because I know some people are like oh, I went to a summer camp or you know yeah somebody I know was doing STEM stuff and it's like nah I was like trying to be cool <laughs> and... I wish I wish <laughs> I had went to a summer camp because you know as an entrepreneur like trying to make money off of that skill one of the things was that for a long time I never realized just how valuable that skill was mm. you know and one of the things about me is that I look at stuff I do and I'm just like, oh, you know, I just know how to do that. Like, I'm getting good at it. So sometimes it gets kind of hard to, like, charge what it's actually worth. Because it's like, you mean everybody can't do that? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, you know, I have to remind myself, like, hey, man, like, you, you put in a lot of work to learn that field. Like, you got to, you know, charge for it. So. Give yourself credit for it. Speaking of which, you know, you are first generation. You're college educated. And you decided to take the route of entrepreneurship. What was it that led you to it? So, um, actually, entrepreneurship found me. (laughs) (laughs) Good and always. Yeah, it found me by means of survival. I do feel like it was, I feel like based off of the things that I did in college, because I did, I worked really hard in college and not in school, more so outside of classes. So, (laughs) um, because I was not the best, like my grades were not the best. And so, you know, what everybody tells you, like, oh, you got to have those internships. So I was like, well, I don't have the best grades. So I'm going to soak up all the experience I can. So I was, you know, all over the place. And based off of that experience, I hit, I feel like I came out and I hit a snag where it's like, you know, technically I could probably be on par with someone who has three to five years of experience fresh out, but I don't have that technical consistent background of three to five years. And so I think that for a lot of people who would see me for like applying for like a marketing internship, when they would see all the things that I've done, they're like, no, you know, and I feel like they would kind of feel like, well, you know, yeah, this person is great because he already going to know how to do every single thing we need him to do. But what about if we give a chance to someone else? And so, mm. you know, I just didn't have, and then with the jobs, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, he got his internship experience, but he don't have consistent full-time experience. So we're going to kind of pass on that too. And so it was just kind of like a weird, like a limbo position. It's like, okay, well, if I ain't got no experience, who's going to give me some experience? Mm. <laughs> so entrepreneurship chose me through that avenue. And I feel like personally from like, it was just kind of from God to know that, you know, if I got that high paying job, I probably would have never reached my full potential of like, creating and doing and going down the routes that I now, you know what I'm saying, want to go down and see for myself. So with you saying how challenging, you know, it was to be let down and to kind of navigate, what would you say has been the most challenging aspect for you when it comes to being first generation as both, you know, now a graduate student and an entrepreneur? One of the most challenging things, I think, for me has been getting to the point where I can let go of the what's supposed to be. 
of how I thought things were supposed to be and learning to take them for what they are and controlling how I respond and how I respond and react and just handle these situations. So, you know, supposed to be having me a nice condo in the middle of Atlanta, downtown, and living this lit life, but that's not what happened. And so from that, what I, what I do is I take it and I push myself to continue to work hard and develop the skills necessary to push myself where I want to be and to put myself in a position to do what I want to do and not just sit back and poke my lips out and pout and say what it's supposed to be. One of the things that I definitely had to come to, like, have my coming in Jesus moment was telling myself, look, Tyrone, like, I really set me down. And I wasn't talking to Tika. I was like, look, Tyrone. <laughs> You are too skilled. You have too many skills that you can monetize and that you do exceptionally well to sit here and sit here and allow yourself to be broke because you're waiting on someone else to give you a job and to give you that. You know what I mean? To give you that work. Mm. You can go out and you can create that work based off of the things you know how to do because... Like I said, from that time, like, I taught myself how to video edit. I taught myself how to code. I can, you know, make a little flyer if I need to. I can do some logos. So I have all these skills, and I'm just like, you don't have to work for such and such and such and such in order to make money off of that. Because there are people out here who, you know what I mean, who need that. They can't find it right now, and, you know, they can give you that money. So when you first started with being an entrepreneur, especially again, first gen, because resources can be different. How were you able to fund some of your projects? Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus is the way. You're right. (laughs) Jesus. I mean, like, I really do look at so many things that I have and that I do. And I'm like, wow, uh, God, thank you. Because you made a way out of my way. And I really like. I sit back and it's like, it's really just like looking at it and it's like, I don't know how I got this stuff. I will say that for me, one thing I do is like, I've always been, I've always been adamant about like electronics. So, you know, I may have asked for like a MacBook for years. And when I finally got it, I took care of it. I still have my original MacBook and I'm not letting it go. <laughs> I still got my MacBook in 2012. And I'm telling you, that thing will have to go legs and like, it's going to have to go a mouth and tell me, look, I'm done. <laughs> Before I, before I get that. Because I mean, my thing is like, I pick up skills that are complementary to everything. So, you know, I've done some computer tech work. So if some go out, I'm like, oh, that's no problem. Let me Google that real quick. Oh, okay, I know how to take that apart. And I know exactly where that part is at to fix it. You know what I mean? Like, they laughed at me because I my iPhone, I just upgraded my iPhone after about three or four years. Oh. You know, if I, I'm not buying a new iPhone. Like, if I crack this screen, I just spend $20 and fix it myself because I know how to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but some of them, I do that too. It was just that matter of like, you know, that's just kind of how I am as well with my master's in IT. And so one of my internships was with Norfolk Southern, where I work as a computer technician. And so I was up there taking apart computers, uh, you know, of course, learning the different components and things like that. And so that continues to benefit me in my day to day life of being able to say if my computer does break. Like, so like even if my screen does break, I could more than likely go and like buy a new screen and install it myself. That's really cool, because thinking about you having such a strong science background, it seems like you've also got this this love, really, for marketing and PR that's just come about as well, or, or did it? Yes, marketing, I absolutely love. I could sit down and talk your ear off about marketing schemes and all the above, like, day in and day out in so many different aspects. Like, it's not even funny. One of my favorites is definitely the cars, because they all sell us the same car branded differently in terms of like Nissan, Infinity, and you go up the line and then you line them mm-hmm. up to each other as far as like Toyota, Lexus, Scion, and then like learning about just the dynamic behind it of like the Scion is supposed to be fit for, you know, this particular person. Like it's, that's really cool to me. I've just always been like that. I do have a love for tech. I have a love for tech. I have a love for a lot of things. Uh, PR, we got a love hate relationship because PR to me is just training sometimes. <laughs> you got to know your strength. It takes a lot of like thinking. Like now, my thing with PR now, you want me to just pitch you the concept of how you should, you know, kind of align your brand with certain like publications and stuff. Oh, I can do that. Please. That's fine. But actually executing PR, I'd be like, ah, oh. <laughs> like you want me to call somebody? What? <laughs> <laughs> so that means you're introvert. Like, oh, very. Hmm. I'm an introverted. I'm an introverted extrovert. Introvert, extrovert. <laughs> yeah, I'm finding yeah. I'm more extrovert, introvert as I'm getting older. Extrovert outside, but when I get home, I don't want to say nothing. I'm quiet. Leave me mm-hmm. alone. 
I just have to feel comfortable in order for the extroverted side to come out. So just in general sense, when you see me, like even my parents a lot would say it. They were very shocked because at school, people like really knew me. It's like, oh my gosh, we always see him smiling and things like that. And my parents were like, really? You just come home and go in his room? What? <laughs> 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 That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. So what would you say is the best advice somebody's ever given to you? The best advice someone has ever given to me? I actually, it wasn't necessarily advice. It was actually a quote and my stepmom was actually responsible for it. She was kind of, I think she was talking about, I don't know if she was talking to or not. I remember we were in the car and I actually remember we were in the car driving somewhere, like the whole family but she just said it in between one of the songs on my iPod. And she said that, you know, idle mind is the devil's workshop. And that particular quote has just always stuck with me because it caused, I was very young. I was like maybe 12 at that point in time. I was like 12 or 13 when she said it. And it just, that just really resonated and made sense to me. So it was like, you know, when I get in trouble, I normally am just bored and I start doing stupid stuff. And so from that point, I just kind of made it a, I made it a point to always try to try to keep myself busy with something productive and, you know, have something going on that I knew would be benefiting me. And that's how I even structure my life now to keep myself constantly, you know, working and focusing on something. Well, do you ever get burnt out? Very much so. (laughs) So how then do you balance that? That's one thing that I'm definitely still trying to figure out in balancing it, especially when it came to like actually monetizing and creating like my prices. Cause I now realize that I do get burnt out. So I want to get to a point where I'm charging enough for my project that it gives me a little bit of coasting room, you know? So it's like I can take on this project and I'll know I need to have another one coming out of pipeline, but I'm not. This project isn't just to cover, you know, these expenses for right now. You know what I mean? It kind of takes mm-hmm. care of these and then a little bit moving forward. Absolutely. Now tell us about a time when you were faced with adversity. What happened and how did you overcome it? Adversity. Oh, so so you saying adversity like entrepreneurship specifically or? Mm, Just in general. So anything that you've experienced has been, I can't believe this is happening to me that you want to talk about. Have at it. Okay, so we can talk about, it was like finals week. I don't remember what year it was in school, but my finals week, my ex got the news that my dad had lost his job during finals week. And so I was really worried because I was, of course, in college. Finals were already stressing me out. And then he, you know, he let me know, like, hey, he lost his job. And I think he had moved out of state for that job. So mm. it was kind of like, you know, it was kind of like, oh, it's a big situation. And I'm already just the type of person who I do not like asking for things. I have a very big problem with that. I don't don't like asking for help. That's one of my biggest problems in life in general. And so, you know, during that time, like I needed to kind of like not take on so many hours at work, but I still had rent and things like that hanging over my head. So uh, that was just a really tough thing to like kind of keep myself together because I was in the middle of final week when that happened. And so I'm like, okay, I got to hold it together. We're going to be okay. I'm going to get through this. And getting through it was just like prayer. But I don't think I failed anything that semester. So that was good. But mainly, like I said, I just stayed prayed up, work hard through it. And just kind of kept my head low and knew like, okay, this happened. We're going to deal with it, but we need to get through this moment. You know what I'm saying? Because he's still going to be job as well. I pass or fail. But it's going to keep me here in college if I fail. So I need to make sure I hold it together enough to get through these finals. And then we can figure out this situation as we can, you know? Mm, absolutely. Because it's not always so crystal clear how you work through something, right? You just got to take it in stride. I feel like most times, more often times than not right now, I'm finding out that it's not crystal clear at all. You just kind of have to say, it shall be done (laughs) and get to it and make it happen. Mm, I like that. So thinking about right when you finished college and you were about to walk into this big old world, I'm curious to know what scared you the most? What scared me the most is what still scares me to this day, and that is this. Mm. I'm trying not to use a expletive here on your podcast. This this car note. <laughs> <laughs> Be your authentic self. Good Lord. So my biggest thing, okay, so throughout college, I got my first car in my first year of college. I got a 2002 Volkswagen Jetta. It was paid for in full. Me and Joe the Jetta was bugging out here. It took about $20 to fill it up. Didn't run gas all the time. Like, me and Joe was good. My dad had actually been offering to get me a car since my sophomore year of college. 
when he had first moved to Dallas, and I went down to visit him. He actually took me to the car lot to look at cars. And I was like, uh, I don't feel comfortable. I can't pay the note. He was like, no, 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 I'm paying the note. And I was like, uh-uh, no, if it's going to be my car, I'm going to pay for it because I don't, I don't want none of that mess. Mm-mm. So I'm like, you know, I want to even, you know, I was just like, if push comes to shove, I want to know that I can handle it. So mm-hmm. I continue to turn that down and I turn it down every single time. Like, just to, like, no, I'm going to keep the Jetta and see, you know, what college is like after. So that, you know, because I'm like, I'm moving back to Atlanta. I don't have a guaranteed job. I don't really have a network. So let me, let me see what that's going to be looking like. Mm-hmm. Well, Joe decided that he wanted to kick the bucket <laughs> in the middle of my senior year. <laughs> Joe decided to take the bucket in the middle of my senior year of college. And so I was kind of forced into getting a newer vehicle. I went and got a 2013 Altima from Nissan. Uh, and so I got my Altima. I was very happy about it. But that was my worst fear was being out here with like a car nose and no job. And that was mm. kind of where I was at. Because as I told as you said before, I do not like asking for stuff. Absolutely hate it. <laughs> So, you know, if I, like, if I'm the type of person, if, if I'm asking for something, I probably needed it, like, a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely. Okay. So where did that come from, though? Because I know, just for me, being a first gen as well, I haven't been the one to want to ask for much. And a lot of that came from the fact of my mom not having much to give when I grew up. She did what she could to provide for us. But I I knew that. So I knew there was not much extra. And so I've always been independent. Do you think the way you were raised or not having Um, is what did it for you? I don't. You know, it's hard to pinpoint it exactly because I just remember, um, like, my parents are divorced. So most of the time I spent in Atlanta, like, growing up, I spent with my mom in Atlanta. And, you know, we were just always taken care of, we were provided for. And I think what a lot of people don't realize about kids is that whatever is going on around them, that is what's normal to them. You know what I mean? So, like, I've had a lot of people be like, oh, you know, of course, like, oh, we're staying together for the kids and blah, blah, blah. As a divorced kid, I can say, like, from a kid's standpoint, if your parents are together, they're not together. Like, people ask me, they're like, you don't want your parents to get back together? And I'm just like, no. Then who am I going to tell when the other one get on my nerves? Mm. You know, it just didn't affect me negatively. I think because I always enjoy, because when they would get together at first when I was younger, they would come back around each other. They would argue because there were things that as a child I was not privileged to because I was a child. And so I did not need to know them. those situations that were going on bubbling under the surface. And so it's like, I don't like them because I don't like people arguing. Like, I have fun with my mom. I have fun with my daddy. They can stay apart. They don't need it. You know what I mean? Like, I like seeing them both happy where they is. <laughs> and so uh-huh. I don't necessarily need them to be together, you know? And it's like, as those situations work themselves out, they're good friends, you know? And so it's just like, it just never made, it was never that thing. But I feel like it's key. So it's like not having, I didn't know. We, you know what I mean? Kind of didn't have. I just thought that was the way things were. Like there were definitely times where I wanted some and they were like, no. But I just thought that they were just being me. <laughs> I was like, well, you're just me. But, you know, I will say for the most part, I was pretty spoiled. I did have a lot of things because my dad not being there I guess having that not day-to-day responsibility when I did ask for something as far as like a new wrestling man or something like that, you know, he was able to get that. So, mm. Makes a lot of sense. Always like I always had, you know, so it's like I always had, but I think that it developed just out of like me being as quiet as I am. Sometimes people forget I'm in the room. So, you know, some things might slip around me and just being like, and being smart, I was able to pay attention and see when things were happening. And so even when they didn't tell me that there were some money trouble, there were things that would happen and I would kind of pick up on. And so it's like, I would know that I needed something or that I wanted something and I wouldn't want to ask because I would not want them to feel bad for not being able to provide. Makes sense. Makes sense. So as we're wrapping up, just a couple of more questions for you and can you tell us what's next for you? Next for me is pushing myself, pushing myself to expand my business and be a lot less shameless in posting about what mm. I do with myself and even learning to trust myself a little bit more. I had an experience this week that really, it kind of put it in my face and showed me that I should trust myself a lot more. I got roped into a photography competition that I didn't know I had entered into. And <sighs> they put me on the spot to take some pictures. And like, I was just so proud of myself for the way that I handled myself in the studio. And, um, <laughs> and just like taking the pictures and then like seeing myself 
see my work measure up against some other photographers' work and like what we were all able to provide under the same pretenses and seeing like what I was able to create, it showed me like you deserve to, you know what I'm saying? You deserve to be here. You worked hard to teach yourself these skills and you know what I mean? And you're worthy. So, mm. main, like I said, trusting myself and just not being so shameless and afraid, like putting it out there to be like, yes, I did shoot at Global Runway. Yes. I did shoot for this person. Yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I did take these photos. So just I love that. Like I said, it out there, promoting myself and just continuing to figure out a way in which I can get to a standpoint where I can be happy with my growth and then start to reach back and give more to other mm-hmm. people like myself. That's real dope. That's important, especially considering the path you walk. I mean, young black male in STEM and creative, there's a lot for you to give back. I definitely believe that. So continue to find your stride and last thing what message or thought or quote um would you want to leave with listeners what do you want them to chew on for the rest of their life one thing i want people to chew on especially a first gen college grad i want everyone to do some deep evaluation and check our privilege i think Hmm. that especially young exceptional even just i'm a good black kid especially I think that we have a privilege that we don't that we're not aware of because to most people it don't look like privilege Hmm. Um, and that is from the standpoint of we we do work hard and we do deserve but we can't we can't get hung up on what should be and you know what I mean just understand the way the world works so I think that for me one of the things that coming out like I said I had the internship and you know I had worked with Microsoft I had worked with Samsung I had worked with all these people and I had done this stuff and then coming out I wasn't able to land that job it was kind of like it was kind of checking that privilege of like yeah you did the work no it's not working out the way you want it to but you still have to keep going you can't ball up and be upset about it and like I said a lot of people weren't able to I just recently discovered like I'm privileged and I'm acting kind of like a whiny baby about this because someone didn't give me this job because someone Mm. didn't you know what I'm saying provide something else and like I said a lot of times it doesn't look like privilege for us because being first gen our you know the people before us you know what I mean they pushed us to go they probably pushed us to go to school because they just like we just want better for you we see people who go to school they do better so you know like my grandmother she thinks I can do anything she thinks I can change the world <laughs> you know what I mean it's like you can't tell her nothing about her grandbaby like oh my grandbaby do that if the computer is plug in he know how to do he know how to see college he can do everything and that's like my biggest fan and so it's like you know coming from that point they didn't go to college, so they didn't. They never knew what the path after it was going to look like. And a lot of us, you know, we're thinking it's going to be a certain way, and we're also taught about the effort of like hard work, not realizing that a lot of it may not have been so much that hard work that some people put in. Not to belittle it, but you know, there's something else that goes with it. Because like for me, like I said, I'm not very much of a. I wasn't so much of a social person, but. After becoming a little bit more social, more people were able to take a look at, you know what I'm saying, what I was able to do and really kind of dive into getting to know me. And I just so happened, you know, like I also so happened to put in the work behind the scenes. It's not just, oh, I just like him, so I'm going to let him do whatever. It's like, oh, I like him. And he also be working his butt off. Like, okay. Like I said, just checking that privilege and learning how to do the work behind the scenes, but then also still play the game of like being, you know what I mean? creating rapport with people. Mm, I definitely can dig that. Well, I have certainly enjoyed this conversation with you. How can we find you in the internet space? On the internet space, this is how you know it's designed to be. It's going to be something big. I am Tyrone King Jr. on all platforms. Facebook, (laughs) Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr. If you want to cash at me, the same thing. (laughs) (laughs) That's the first. I like that. I like that. Um, Yeah, it's a very close. You know, the brand is very consistent. I was able to get my full name, and that is my government name, y'all. So, yeah. I'm just saying, make sure you add the junior because I can't be held responsible for nothing that the senior did. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I didn't do it. Mm. (laughs) If it was the full 92, I ain't do it. I I ain't do it. it. I ain't do it. Look, I plead the fifth. 
<laughs> well, look, well, thank you so much for taking time to come onto the show. You've been amazing. Wishing you well and all that lies ahead. And you got a first gen family. So if you need us, holler let us. Awesome. You know me, you are queen in our graduation date. So, yes. <laughs> graduation twin. Yeah. Graduation yes, twin. Yes. May 9th, 2015. So that was the day I walked out of the University of Mississippi. And, mm. you know, the good old government emailed me while I was on the floor. That's another thing, y'all. was sitting on, uh-huh. they did not care. They emailed they literally emailed me while I was on the floor. I hadn't even walked off stage yet, and they emailed me. And I was like, huh? <laughs> that is interesting. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this. I'm so glad we got to connect. I need to get cold again so I can post my picture in your sweatshirt that Alexis got me for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Purely dope. That's what you are. Yes, I love it. I appreciate that. Thank you. You are so Thank very you. welcome. So, yes. Thank you again for having me so much, and I look forward to interacting with you guys growing maybe we can collaborate on some stuff in the future absolutely always looking forward to that and definitely support my first gen folks so no doubt yes yes